only planes of the southern U.S. lies a city that could be destroyed in seconds. We'd be looking at damage up into the billions of dollars. 300 mile per hour winds whipping through the heart of the city. Everything passing through the Metroplex like a meat grinder. A blizzard of lethal debris destroying everything in its path. The damage is absolutely incredible. You start talking about tens of thousands of people at risk. They have no place to go. It's unimaginable. It goes beyond anything that Hollywood has done. It's a scenario so horrific, most would prefer to ignore the possibility. But it could happen tomorrow if an F5 tornado hits Dallas, Texas. As the home of the Dallas Cowboys and the world's largest indoor rodeo, Dallas is more than the financial center of North Texas. It's the epitome of Texas pride. At the heart of the city lies a thriving downtown, packed with skyscrapers, Texas-sized symbols of economic success. But a single violent tornado could bring Dallas to its knees in a matter of minutes. I don't think that anybody has a grip on the potential of this event. Many residents believe their beloved city is somehow immune. People in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex say that tornadoes never hit downtown areas. But just 200 miles north, another city once thought the same until it happened to them. A former Wild West town, Oklahoma City is still rich with cowboy culture. But Oklahoma's past isn't the only thing that's wild. We have wild weather. We have strong winds. We have dust storms. I can't see anything anyway. I, I, I can't go real fast through here. We have drought. We have flash floods. And the wildest weather of all came in the form of a monster tornado in 1999. This is not good. No, this there is not good. May 3rd, 9 a.m., lifelong Oklahoma City resident Teresa Isbell leaves for work. It was a normal day. Sunshiny, pretty May day. Surprisingly, perfect conditions for producing what are known as supercell storms. With a unique rotating motion, these powerful thunderstorms can live for hours, churning out inches of rain, devastating hail, and occasionally, violent tornadoes. At KWTV in Oklahoma City, veteran meteorologist Gary England sees danger in the sunny skies. I walked outside. It was very humid. It was a little bit windy, not very windy. And it, it just had that feel. 30 years of experience triggers a gut reaction he can't ignore. I walked back into the station. The first meteorologist I came to, I just said, priority one. When we issue a priority one out at the weather office, everything in this station stops and everyone begins to work for the weather office. 4.30 p.m., Gary England's instincts are dead on. He and his team can now see rotating supercell storms breaking out 50 miles south of Oklahoma City. Usually when you have a severe weather day, you might have one or two storms go up rotating. Every storm that went up was rotating. 5.30 p.m., small tornadoes begin touching down. But only 30 miles north of the storm, the weather is still good, and Teresa Isbell and her husband head to their daughter's softball game, unaware of the danger. To our surprise, they canceled the games and said a storm was coming. And being Okies as we are, we still didn't take it serious. And we just kind of hung out and talked to everybody. At the Channel 9 Weather Center, however, all eyes are on one particular vicious rotating storm. This is a huge circulation. Closing in on Oklahoma City from the southwest. It put down this huge stovepipe tornado, just boom, right to the ground. Oh, my God. Uh, the beast reveals itself. A half-mile-wide F3 tornado with winds exceeding 150 miles per hour. Then, in an instant, it disappears, and it seems Oklahoma might escape disaster. 
But after a few minutes, the twister returned. Suddenly it was back and it was a mile wide. The twister has gained strength. It is now an F5, the most dangerous of all tornadoes. You know, I've been doing this a long time. I had never seen anything like that in my life. It was just absolutely awesome. And of course, shortly after that, it started moving up into really populated areas. It was obvious to me that some people were going to die. Meanwhile, the Isbells finally head home from the softball fields. They still have little understanding of what is heading their way until they turn on the TV. We get home and start watching Channel 9, which is Gary English. We have a large tornado on the right. Large tornado on the right. And he was very, I would call it different. There it is. Multiple vortex tornado on the ground. It was so intense. For you folks in the path of this tornado, Get below ground. I had never, ever heard anything like that from Gary England before. And I knew it was serious then. 6.30 p.m., the tornado is moving directly toward the suburb of Moore and into Oklahoma City. As tornado sirens blast through her town, Teresa Isbell and her family realize they have to leave now. And I grabbed my purse and my dog, and that's all I left with. They're desperate to get to a relative cellar three miles away. My husband was driving the car when we left here. I mean, he was just driving like a madman. You were so scared, and your adrenaline was rushing so. Seconds after they clamor into the cellar, the storm arrives. It unleashes a giant, dangerous hail. After a few minutes, the pounding hail stops. But then... I can feel wind. And then I heard a roar. At 300 miles an hour, the tornado arrives. Moore is now being battered by the most powerful winds ever recorded by radar. The twister sucks up everything in its path and spits it out as a barrage of deadly missiles. Above ground, no one is safe. He's the only person in there. Gary England watches the horror on the live feed from his station's chopper. Whoa, whoa. You couldn't see anything moving, and I'm here, I'm here thinking, yeah, are they all dead? This is absolutely incredible. Keep him right on the damage pad. It was just a wasteland. <laughs> Teresa Isbell and her family are fortunate. Their mad dash for the cellar has saved their lives. I was relieved. I thought everything was okay. But some of us just didn't know what was waiting for us at home. The Isbells hurry back to their neighborhood, where they find city officials already in action. Teresa is escorted back to her home by an officer. We came around the corner, drove up my street, and he stopped and he said, well, do you see your house? And I said, no. And he stopped for a minute, and I turned around and looked behind me, and I saw the taillights of my Mustang. And I knew that was our house. That day, 36 people lost their lives, and 675 were injured. The twister left behind 2 million cubic yards of trash and debris, more than Oklahoma City generates in an entire year. Thousands of homes and the memories inside them were destroyed. I've got a new home. I'm proud of my new home. But it doesn't make up for what I lost. And it never will. It's hard to imagine, but experts believe it could be worse. If that F5 had occurred at another location, another city that's less prepared, it, you know, it would have been a major tragedy. That tragedy could happen in Dallas, Texas. Several factors put it more at risk. First, much of the city is covered in concrete that prevents rain from absorbing into the ground. This makes Dallas extremely susceptible to flash flooding from supercell storms that can cause deaths and inundate underground shelters. Second, the Oklahoma City tornado occurred in the evening when most people were at home giving them the opportunity to seek proper shelter. 
If an F5 occurs any earlier in Dallas, the results will be much worse. Let's say it was at drive time. Let's say it's a little earlier when schools are just getting out. And worst of all, a tornado's potential for death and destruction increases with population density. Oklahoma City spreads its 500,000 people over 625 square miles. Dallas packs 3 million people into an area half the size. Downtown Dallas, during the time when everyone's there working, that's 100,000 people right there. That's a lot of people being exposed simultaneously to the circulation. The catastrophe would be monumental. Up next, how horror in Dallas would unfold. Here comes, you know, a mile-wide storm moving along a uh, freeway, and the freeway stuck. No one can get off of it. A vortex of destruction pulverizes everything in its path. It's only a matter of time before a violent tornado slams into Dallas, Texas. A perfect spring day can spawn the deadliest tornadoes. The presence of buoyant warm air is often the precursor to raging supercell storms. That warm, moist air can, can kind of be thought of as the fuel that, that helps get the storms going. This warm air from the Gulf of Mexico meets cool, dry air moving in from the Rocky Mountains. Then there's a natural overturning that wants to happen in the atmosphere. Fast winds aloft cause a rolling motion in the lower atmosphere. Then things begin to shift as an updraft tilts the circulation from horizontal to vertical. And the air that's converging into the base of the vortex stretches that vortex almost like an ice skater drawing their arms in, and it spins ever faster. And that's how the thunderstorm updraft acquires its rotation. A supercell storm is born with tremendous power to dump torrential rain and hail for hours as it races across the land. But most deadly of all, it can produce its own violent offspring. Tornadoes. Log track violent tornado. Oh man, it is still on the ground. And the tornado is just a smaller feature that rotates quicker, faster than the, the parent storm. One part of the country is particularly prone to such awesome twisters. It's called Tornado Alley. If you were to draw up a recipe for tornadoes, the southern and central Great Plains of the U.S. is, uh, is about as good as you could do. And lying on the southern end of Tornado Alley is Dallas, Texas. As the working day comes to a close, darkness falls on what was a warm spring afternoon. A towering supercell storm closes in on Dallas. While commuters begin their trek home, it begins to unleash its torrential rains. Flash flooding is a very serious threat. Only an inch and a half to two inches of rain an hour could be enough to cause uh, some fairly serious flash flooding. Hail begins to fall. Giant balls of ice, some three inches in diameter, hurtled to the ground at over 100 miles per hour. Drivers panic, causing gridlock. A penny size or larger starts falling in the metroplex. People start parking underneath overpasses so that the roadways are impassable. More than 100,000 motorists are trapped in the path of the storm. Suddenly, the rain and hail cease. And then you're right underneath the, the updraft of the storm where it's rather calm and quiet. In the silence, a siren sounds. It's a warning from the National Weather Service. The storm is about to deliver its knockout punch, an F5 tornado. A mile-wide twister plows into the city. The motions are surreal. And there's nothing else like it in nature. Rotating faster than 300 miles per hour, it devours one neighborhood after another. The only escape is underground, but in Dallas, that's not easy. In Texas, really, you're not going to find basements. We just do not build many basements at all. Above ground, the buildings are shredded into debris. At 300 miles per hour, every chunk of wood turns into a deadly missile. If 
you're on the street, either in a car or walking, your chances of survival are probably minimal. 6 p.m., the giant twister breaches downtown Dallas. Glass facades explode. It would be a, a huge impact. The downtown skyscrapers with most of their windows blown out of them. The fatalities and injuries are going to be very graphic with all that glass falling. Suddenly, it's gone. The clouds pass, and the sun illuminates Dallas. The light reveals a mile-wide laceration, 30 miles long, sliced through the heart of the city. A city that took decades to build is flattened in minutes. Most people can't fathom, fathom what's going to happen. Citizens desperately search the wasteland for loved ones. The injuries and fatalities number in the thousands. Dallas is afflicted with a wound that will take years to heal. The magnitude of what our typical expectation may be so below what is possible that maybe we're not really taking the steps we need to. Up next, forecasting a disaster. Can the city be warned in time? The radar is not seeing the region close to the ground where tornadoes actually form and develop. And later, can scientists actually destroy a tornado? to Dallas is undeniable. An F5 tornado could devour the city, but when will disaster strike? The atmosphere is a very, very complex system, and uh, the behavior is, is sometimes very chaotic, so it's, it's one of the most challenging, I think, physical systems on the Earth, actually. The business of warnings and meteorology is far from perfect. Scientists can forecast storm conditions that may be ripe for tornado production. But the actual behavior of those storms is another matter. We can predict typically, oh, there's going to be supercells today versus not, but whether one particular supercell might produce a tornado versus another one, we really don't understand why that's the case. Predicting the exact time and place of a tornado strike remains virtually impossible. Hang on, hang on! We still don't understand what triggered the big supercell that produced the F5 tornado in Oklahoma. Even the technology normally valued by meteorologists, such as the high-power NixRad radar system, has its limits when it comes to tornado detection. You get out too far from the radar, the Earth is curving beneath the beam of the radar. The radar is not seeing the region close to the ground, where tornadoes actually form and develop. At the Center for Analysis and Prediction of Storms in Norman, Oklahoma, Dr. Drogemeyer and his researchers are determined to improve the situation. Their mission, to create a new, cheaper radar so more can be deployed to monitor that critical area near the ground. We're developing a very inexpensive, low-power radars that you could actually put on buildings and cell phone towers. We believe these radars are going to provide us a lot of capability to anticipate the occurrence of a tornado far uh, longer before it forms. Still in development, the new radar may not be ready before a twister hits Dallas. Meanwhile, weather experts must play it safe and issue warnings whenever there's a hint of danger. Unfortunately, that means a lot of false alarms. Well, there are a lot of warnings we put out and no tornado happens, and they get used to that happening, so complacency is a problem. When a tornado warning is issued, citizens have, on average, just 12 minutes to find shelter, and officials know they can't force people to act. You can't really go up to someone's house and say, hey, you need to do this. You know, you're, there just isn't enough manpower to do that. If no one does anything and they go sit out their front yard, it's going to be terrible. But could the people of Dallas be saved by something straight out of science fiction? Would it ever be possible to stop a tornado? In our computer models, we've run those scenarios where you have a very mature thunderstorm, and if you could deliver some type of big disruptive influence, sure, you could modify the occurrence of the storm. You could maybe even completely kill it off. But finding that disruptive influence is no easy task. Well, there's been some talk about using um, nuclear weapons and other things like that. But a fallout, so to speak, would be much more harmful than the tornado itself. The research continues. But what if you suddenly find yourself in the path of a violent tornado? How to protect yourself and your loved ones when it could happen tomorrow returns. Tornadoes can strike anywhere, at any time, with extreme force. That is just unbelievable. But when they arrive, 
Split-second decisions could save your life or seal your fate. The best place to take cover is below ground in a basement or storm shelter. If those aren't available, go to a small central room without windows, like a bathroom on the lowest floor. If you're outdoors, find a low spot like a ditch and get close to the ground. Never attempt to take shelter under a highway overpass as they offer no protection from deadly debris. Perhaps the most important thing to remember is that we're all vulnerable. It's part of human nature to think to ourselves, well, it, it, it's going to happen somewhere else. It's not going to happen here to me. But as those who witnessed the F5 tornado in Oklahoma know, the threat is real. It's the case of when, not if. The threat is now. Tornadoes basically will go where they want to and do what they want to when they want to. It could happen tomorrow.